Hey, uh, Mr. Sensible asked me to make a video about the Coriolis effect and he said he would debunk it. There you go, sorted. So there you go, Brian. If you extrapolate on from that little demonstration I gave, you should now have a better understanding of Coriolis. What, what do you mean? You want more explanation? Well, I suppose I could spare the time because, you know, thankfully I am supported with my subscribers, members and patrons. I want to give massive thanks to all of my supporting members and patrons. Thank you all so very much. So after Brian had done um, a debunk on Mage and got himself onto the Mage Rage list, I asked him to tell us a bit about Coriolis because I was not convinced he knew what it was. So this would be interesting as I have absolutely 100 million percent faith that I know exactly what the Coriolis effect is. Is it? As I seem to remember you saying this, Brian. The next problem that was had Right, I'm not going to go in too much into it. Is there was no rotation to be seen. This supposed out rotation there was none of it to be seen in the video. Now, Mr. Sensible said to in his reply to flat side that that was because that we have the conservation of momentum going on, and that if, if himself or anyone else challenges what I uh, am going to put forward in this video then they are wrong. Well, that's quite confident of you, Brian. They don't know what the Coriolis effect is. They are following a model and a belief and they need to get into the real world. Okay, the real world. Is there was no rotation. There was no rotation. There was no rotation. This is going to be a short video. Cool. It won't take very long. Excellent. It's just going to be a little bit of reading. Oh, so it may be a little while then. Perhaps you better get on with it. What is the Coriolis effect? Is. What is the Coriolis effect? A question that has been much on my mind in recent weeks. Is what is the Coriolis is what effect is? Is it? The Coriolis effect is a visual effect that is observed from the rotating non-inertial reference frame by an observer looking up into the stationary inertial reference frame. Well, it's a visual effect in that the actual moving object is actually continuing to move in a straight line. It just looks as though it's curved, but that does have real world effects. At an object, either stationary or moving in a linear path that appears, appears to be deviating from stationary or straight, making a perceived, perceived curved path. Coriolis force or effect is an effect that takes place on moving objects, not stationary. This is purely a visual effect that does not have measurements and calculations. It does not create weather systems. But it absolutely determines the direction of rotation of weather systems, both north and south of the equator, which rotate in opposite directions. And did you also know, and not a lot of people know this, it also determines the direction of rotation of the Earth's ocean currents, which are different north and south of the equator. It has no connection to a person's latitude. It has every connection to latitude. Depending on the latitude, Coriolis has different effects. Or pendulums. Have you not heard of Foucault's pendulum, which behaves differently depending on latitude? It is not something airline pilots need to account for. Well, pilots, Miao China, um, aerial and, or otherwise, are flying powered vehicles 
and will constantly be steering and adjusting to allow for wind and so on towards their next waypoint. Nor is it a force. Well, you've got something right. It's not a real force. The object continues to move in a straight line. It's a fictitious force. To the observer on the ground, it appears as though a force is acting on the object. Or something that is observed from the stationary inertial reference frame. Reference frame. It is only observed from the rotating non-inertial reference frame. So if the Earth was rotating, we would be observing this this. Sorry. So if the, the Earth was rotating, we would be observing this visual effect all the time. It does happen all the time. The problem you have is scale. Unless you are looking at something over a long period of time or over a great distance, the effect is almost imperceptible. If you were a sniper at Sacramento firing a bullet northwards to a distance of 1,000 yards, that bullet will veer allowing for wind, it will veer less than two inches. But that never happens. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. The end. The end. Oh, N nothing else to say then, Brian? So I'll read that one more time so everyone can get the full gist of it. <clears throat> I don't think we need to read that again, Brian. It's a pity, really, because there's so much you could learn if you studied what's available on the internet. And many Bothans died to bring us this information. Oh, that's sad. Perhaps we'd better go back to this. I thought we'd better go back to some basics here, Brian. So I did a couple of demonstrations. First, this one. I tracked down an amazingly good-looking stunt double to carry out this demonstration and I sat him in a particularly dirty-looking car. After some detailed explanations, my stunt double finally understood he had to hold his arm out with a tennis ball and let go so he could see what happened. Now how can that be the case? If the Earth is turning, let's say at 800 miles an hour at my latitude, why does the ball not whiz off at 800 miles an hour? Well, the thing is, if the Earth at that point is turning at 800 miles an hour, the car is also travelling at 800 miles an hour, as is that amazingly good-looking stunt double and the tennis ball. So we can see what happens when the car is travelling at the same speed as the road, in this case, 800 miles an hour. So let's change the speed of the car. Excellent demonstration, handsome stunt double man. Perhaps we better do it a little slower. Now, Brian, we already know that the Earth, the road, is travelling at 800 miles an hour. The car is now travelling at an additional 40 miles an hour, as is stunt man and the tennis ball. When he lets go of it, there is conservation of momentum. The tennis ball continues to try and travel along in the same direction at 800 plus 40 miles an hour. But it's acted on by another force called gravity as well, but we won't talk about that, which is pulling it downwards. So it goes forward at a diagonal. We'll quickly jump back to the first demo. So as a thought experiment, let's paint a little orange target. Now, if Mr. Sensible Stunt Double watched as that tennis ball dropped, it would go straight towards and hit that orange target. Let's do the same with the moving vehicle. There we go, we'll put the box directly under where he lets go of the tennis ball. And as we can quite easily see, that tennis ball is going nowhere near the target. Now, if Mr. Stunt Sensible had looked and watched that ball, he would see that he let go of it over the orange box. But for some reason, it veered off course. That's because it maintained its own momentum, which was 40 miles an hour in our example, faster than the speed of the road and the earth. So we can now see that differences in speed of a ballistic object make a difference. It can affect the apparent path it takes. Let's look at the world. So if we've got the equator here, 
rotating round the Earth once a day, we know it's about a thousand miles an hour. Further up, it's drawing smaller circles so it doesn't go quite as fast. Now let's say Brian decides on a new career as a cocaine smuggler from Colombia. And he's got a new technique. He's not going to use aircraft or submarines or mules of some sort. He's going to catapult it. So his cocaine is going to catapult directly to Miami. He aims it perfectly. Unfortunately, his latitude is spinning faster than Miami. It appears to curve and miss because it maintains its momentum as the Earth turns. In effect, Columbia travelled eastwards at a thousand miles an hour. Brian travelled eastwards at a thousand miles an hour. So did his cocaine. Unfortunately, Miami only travelled eastwards at 900 miles an hour and his cocaine is now in the drink. I think you're going to need a new career. I have absolutely 100 million percent faith that I know exactly what the Coriolis effect is. No, Brian, I'm afraid that you don't get it. Witness your claim in your mage debunk that we should have seen the Earth turn away underneath it at about a thousand miles an hour. The only way for the Earth to turn away underneath things would be if conservation of momentum was not a thing. Unfortunately, it is. You're correct that Coriolis is not a force, although it looks and apparently behaves as though it's a force. It's a fictitious force. It relies on an object moving from one location to another and for the location itself to be rotating at a different speed to the start point, thereby making the straight line path it has actually taken appear as a curve. Ryan, I'm sorry, but your video just further confirms the fact that you don't know anything at all, really, about Coriolis. Whenever, excuse me. Hello. Oh, hola, Senor Escobar. Yes, yes, I know Brian, yes. No, 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 um, I, I think I always tell you, his scheme stands no chance of working unless you want your um, gear rather wet. Yeah, well, I can ask him. Um, hold on a second, uh, uh, Pablo. Um, Brian, Pablo wants to know uh, what size feet you've got. I think he wants to fit you with concrete boots. I'm not sure. Shut up and sit down.